Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash mm, pro revenge, I guess I'll call it. It might be petty revenge. It might be nuclear revenge as referenced in the very end of this story. I was kind of skimming through it just to see where I should place it. Doesn't really matter where it goes because some stories just need to be told. As I've said many times before, this is from our good friend user Ethan Ralph is fat. I guess uh, a little pause to the LARPing logs or something like that, which I, I'm good with those, you know, but if he wants to stretch his legs and, and try something different, then there ain't nothing wrong with that neither. You know, I'm, I'm here for whatever comes. So I appreciate you guys for being here as well. Not live streaming this on Twitch today. I swear I'm, I'm going to get back into it eventually once my computer issues are sorted. If you'd like to check that out, the Twitch link in the description, we'll go ahead and get some additional plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this r slash pro revenge ah, cringe. Ethan Escapades 1. But it's not like, you know, Ethan Ralph's escapades. It's, it's Ethan Ralph is fat's escapades. And they're two very different people, let me tell you. <laughs> I declare exterminatus on apartment 14B. Already, title alone, I'm getting some, some bourgeois beard vibes. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to see how it goes. If you've been around the channel for long, you've probably heard a tale or two of mine. Indeed, I'll link some of those in the description as well. Guitar Beard Saga, Bing Bong, doing numbers. <laughs> Most of my tales take place in public, where the decorum of social interaction often dictates my actions. Despite some of my odder ways and proclivities, I try really hard to not be the weirdest person in the room, which is usually in stark contrast to the manner in which I dress. All of this is to say that I, like most people, can be a bit weird when I'm on my own. <laughs> At least you can admit to it, though. I think most people consider themselves normal, but uh, that's a problem that we'll tackle on another day, I guess. <laughs> The times when I'm with close friends and alone is when I am at my dumbest and most animated. These are also the times that I am the most dramatic. So please join me on my bland journey into my personal life that shall be called the Ethan Escapades. Well, I hope it's not too bland. I I'm going to try and spice it up for you a little bit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the presentation of these tales will be very different in formatting from the stories that you might have seen from me before. There is no cast list. There's no serialization from episode to episode. No, these are more like journal entries with some narrative flair to keep them from being boring as all heck. The best way to describe these tales is just to call them brain vom. And that is enough waxing poetic about these stories, though. I will allow the following to speak for itself. So please enjoy this tale, which I will call The Time I Channeled Dale Gribble. Pocket sand! Cha 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 cha! Monkey style! <laughs> Monkey style! <laughs> uh, squirrel tactics! So, back during the early days of the lockdowns, a friend of mine had to take a trip to see her mother. Sadly, her father was one of the first people we knew who had passed away due to the novel creeping illness that had taken hold of the world at that time. Yeah, sorry for your loss, man. Super rough. Should be taken more seriously, but I don't know. I'm not driving the ship. <laughs> I just take care of me and mine. That's all I could do. He fought for a long time in the hospital, and my friend, who we will call Sarah, had been a nervous wreck at home for about three weeks as his condition worsened. Eventually, the news came, and she had to travel across the country back to her hometown to help with the uh, preparations and to support her mother. I was called upon to do some house sitting. She stopped by my apartment before leaving to drop off a key and gave me some instructions. She told me to make sure to water her plants and take care of the ferrets that she had left at home. She also warned me about the mess, saying not to mind it. Uh-oh. <laughs> when you say mess, uh, 
When I inquired about if she would like me to deal with said mess, she rebuked the offer, thinking that she was already asking too much of me. She, much like myself, had trouble asking for help. And I've told you many times before, just ask for help if you need it, man. Ain't no shame in that. I never would have gotten this far in the YouTube journey if I didn't ask for help from time to time. And by from time to time, I mean basically every single episode when I plug the Patreon at the end. <laughs> I assured her that I could handle the issue, offered my condolences, wished her luck, and said goodbye. It would not be until the following day that I would actually head over to her apartment, Cracking open her apartment door, let loose a nauseating smell. Oh God, this is, I thought it was a pro revenge. Why are we going into a beard nest? No! <laughs> uh, a mixture of mold, decay, and some organic smell that I could not quite put my finger on. As I entered, I was horrified by the state of her apartment. Sarah normally had one of the most well-decorated homes of my friend group. It always smelled nice, and everything was always pristine. The apartment I walked into looked like a weird, horrific copy of her home. Half-empty delivery meals sat uneaten, dishes in her sink were piled high, with fossilizing food caked onto them, and above all else, there was the incessant buzzing. Ugh, ugh, ugh. No less than three different types of flies had infested her apartment, the kitchen was dominated mostly by the fruit fly nation, while the larger house fly nation dominated the rest of her home. And I guess a uh, horse fly nation, they've taken up residence in the toilet and the world was at peace until the dragon fly nation attacked. <laughs> I tried to ignore the mess and the smell. I walked over to the sink and grabbed the largest glass that I could find to start watering the house plants. As water entered the sink, an even larger cloud of flies erupted from beneath the molding dishes. Oh God, it hurts me so deep. I stepped back with a start and began truly taking in my environment. There was no ignoring it. This was an ungodly amount of flies. Yeah, even like one is an ungodly amount. <laughs> Jesus didn't have nothing to do with that. A quantity of flies that would be more at home on the set of The Exorcist than in someone's actual home. I walked into a room, which was still surprisingly clean, with the odd pile of laundry here or there. I watered the plants in there, making sure that the room was relatively fly-free. I allowed myself to recalibrate as I did this with all the hippy-dippy reverence that I could. I talked to the plants, as I am one to do. I don't know if plants feel things, but I do like to think that everything is connected. I then carefully checked over the plants for any signs of insect infestation or just general health. Satisfied with my work with the plants, I ventured back out into the swarming infestation that was her living room, to try and check on her ferrets. You're a good person to do all this. You know, I also really enjoy your reverence for plants. There's something deeper going on in this story and I hope that we'll uncover the mystery quite shortly. I was surprised to see the ferrets in their giant strawberry cuddle sack seeming much less active than their normal selves. Oh no. As I reached in to try and pet one, I received a rather harsh bite. Withdrawing my hand quickly, I felt a pain in my eye as a small fruit fly had decided to land in one. Shaking my finger and rubbing my eye, I found the zen that I had just cultivated quickly leaving my body. Something wasn't right here. These ferrets knew me and they typically didn't act like this. I mean, living in an environment like that, is it really a surprise if they're getting sick? Is all of this Sarah's fault? Am I supposed to be mad at her? I, I don't know what's happening here. I reached into the cuddle sack again and withdrew the white ferret. It let out a pain screech as I pulled it from the comfort of its cuddle sack and its skin felt scabby and moist. I did my best to not get bitten as I looked over the poor little fur noodle. It was covered in fresh sores. And then on a much closer inspection, I spotted the issue. It was covered in lice. 
Oh God, you're, some, you're responsible for this animal's well-being. Sarah, what are you doing? <sighs> but then the part that gets me, the part that makes me think I can't really be all that mad is that OP said her house is usually pristine. So what is going on here? I placed the white ferret down gently and removed the brown one, finding its fur and skin in a much sadder state of affairs. It is in times like this that I wish I could cry. My heart broke for the little fur noodles and I felt that I had to do something. I went to their waste pan and prepared to lift it, but then noticed that their waste had been infested with fly larvae. Oh God. <laughs> I can't anymore. If it wasn't for those ferrets, I'd lock the door and never look back. I gasped audibly at this sight, and this gasp would ignite a flame inside me that rarely burns. As I inhaled, I drew in one of the large flies, which I then spit on the ground in disgust. Oh, that's unfortunate. My blood began to boil, and a righteous rage against the invading insects swelled in my chest. I stood, placed my hand on my chest, and made a proclamation. A proclamation paraphrased from one of my favorite video games. I have arrived, and it is now that I perform my charge. In fealty to my friend and her fur noodles, and by grace of the strawberry cuddle sack, I declare exterminatus upon apartment 14B. I hereby sign the death warrant of all pests, and consign a million souls to oblivion. May nature account in all balance, Ethan protects. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, praise be the strawberry cuddle sack. <laughs> uh, I fired off a quick text to Sarah, telling her that I would be taking care of her fly problem and explaining the state of her ferrets. There was a small back and forth, but eventually I said, I have to do this. If not for you, then for the fur noodles. She relented and granted me permission to set forth on my mission. On the outside, it was just a dirty apartment with a fly infestation and some sick ferrets. Inside, though, I was the last space marine, standing against the approaching Tyranid invasion. The last protector of the ferrets in this home. I had no choice but to stop them, or die trying. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. I love when things are made bigger than they are in literature. This is beautiful. To all of you rolling your eyes at this, that's fine. I know the inside of my head is very dramatic. I live a rich internal life, and sometimes dramatizing my surroundings is just a part of who I am. I set to work cleaning out the waste pan and dealing with the dishes in the sink. I rapidly cleaned these things before cleaning up all the food that was left out. This only left the entire swarms of flies and the infested ferrets. I removed all the ferrets cuddle sack and threw them into a trash bag to take with me. I then stopped at a pet store to purchase some cheap temporary lodgings for the ferrets and a few toys for them. Next, I stopped by a farming supply store to purchase a giant jug of pour-on ivermectin, normally used for cattle to treat the lice. Finally, I had to acquire my weapons against the insect hordes. Bleach, spray bottles, dish soap, and a fun little toy called Bug Assault, which is like a Nerf gun that fires salt at flies and kills them. Really? That sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get one of those for my house. I raced home to throw the cuddle sacks into my washing machine, and then with vengeance in my heart, I set out to deal with my Cory. It does seem like quite an investment. None of this is your responsibility, but the fact that you would take up this war, it does my heart well. I already knew, but I'll say it again. You're one of the good ones, OP. As I got to the apartment, I looked around and was pleased with the cleaning that I had done, but it had done little to abate the infestation. They still audibly buzzed around, mocking me with their presence. For now though, I would have to let that rest. First, I would have to treat the fur noodles. I took hold of them and put them into a large plastic bin that I had also purchased. 
I weighed them and then set to mixing water and ivermectin to the proper ratio for their weight. Then I treated their skin by using a feeding syringe. I did this with some level of confidence, as the ratio is not difficult to get right with some basic math, and I had used this exact method to alleviate other parasites from rodents in the past. Ivermectin is incredibly toxic, but thankfully mammals can tolerate it. It's readily absorbed through the skin, which then makes their skin and blood toxic to parasites. Parasites can't tolerate it, their nervous system breaks down in the presence of ivermectin, which causes them to perish quite quickly. I would have to continue this treatment several times as I waged my war with the flies, but eventually these ferrets would be cleansed of their unwanted guests. Aw, oh, those little babies are gonna be so grateful, they'll probably say I'm sorry for biting you in the way that ferrets say that, which is mostly just like running up your sleeve or something. The next thing I did was excitedly break out the bug assault. <laughs> I smiled to myself like a kid on Christmas as I cracked out the bright yellow plastic toy and filled the reservoir on top with salt. <laughs> I then charged around the apartment, attempting to use buckshot salt as a means of dealing with the insect problem. Does this really work? It has to. I googled it. I just bought one. <laughs> I can't wait to try this thing out. Did I shout, FOR THE FERRETS, as I did this? You better believe that I did. <laughs> Unfortunately, contrary to the advertising for the bug assault and my hopes and dreams, this toy did not do the job well enough. It took down some of the bigger flies, but not in the numbers that I needed. The fruit flies were completely unfazed by this weapon. With some disappointment, I tossed the toy aside and went with my original plan. I filled spray bottles with a mix of dish soap, ethanol, and water, and this mixture will pretty much kill any bug. It works by clogging up the little holes in their exoskeleton that allows them to breathe. While I take no joy in ending the life of nature's creatures, this was an exception to my normal live and let live policy. A lonesome house spider is one thing. A complete infestation is another thing entirely. Yes, we cannot abide parasites. I'm happy to let living things live, but not at the cost of my own health and sanity. Additionally, it was very likely that these flies were the cause of the lice infestation on Sarah's ferrets. So... Nature be darned, it was time to reject monkey and return to human. As an aside, I am rather surprised that OP isn't more upset with Sarah, but, you know, in the beginning, you did say that she was going through some stuff. Seems she fell into somewhat of a depression or something like that, but let those little ferrets be your reason, you know? It's the same thing that I do with my kids. Some days I can't get out of bed and then I look over, I'm like, do it for them, you know? Anyways, I began storming around the apartment, chasing down my quarry, spraying my akimbo spray bottles at any fly in my effective range, and this eventually yielded results. In my ferret-friendly fervor, I got a little too zealous and neglected my understanding of friction, <laughs> As the floor became saturated with soapy water, it became, uh, less easy to walk on. Eventually, as I ran about screaming, FOR THE FERRETS, I found myself slipping and falling. <laughs> One particularly hard fall landed me flat on my back, giving my noggin a good flogging in the process. I stared up at the buzzing swarm in a semi-concussed daze, while the swarm had seemingly decreased in size, this method, too, would not be good enough to cleanse these heretical insects from apartment 14B. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would you not just use RAID like a normal person? <laughs> Two reasons. Firstly, I don't like chemical pesticides if they can be avoided. I hate the smell of them, and something about them always makes me uneasy. Secondly, I was afraid of what might happen to the ferrets should a cloud of bug killer land on their furry little heads. So, I had to keep it natural. 
I have seen some some traps that you could jerry rig if you just Google it for a minute. But I don't know. A Kimbo spray bottles also seems pretty fun. So you do you, I guess. <laughs> After regaining my thoughts. I went out and acquired an obscene quantity of flypaper and thumbtacks. With this new pheromone-based weapon, surely I would be able to eliminate the invading houseflies. I hung them from every surface possible, getting the gross glue on my hands and in my hair as I worked. And then I sat, smoking a cigarette and waiting. Within 10 minutes, the first fly to fall victims to these traps was stuck and soon after, many other flies would follow. This would work and cause much less of a mess for me to clean up later. Satisfied with this battle strategy, I then moved on to the sink, the origin of the fruit fly invasion. I poured bleach into the sink and set out some cups full of alkali marinade to catch any intrepid fruit flies that might escape the initial purging of their home base. Then with all the tools deployed, I made sure that the ferrets had fresh food and water. I deployed the new cuddle sacks so they had something to sleep in and cracked open a few new toys for them. They still made upset noodle noises as they moved about and stuffed themselves, but soon, soon they would be better. Hot damn, bless up OP. Such a good dude stepping up, not judging Sarah for the difficult time she's going through. Better friend than me by, by a very long shot. <laughs> for the next week, I would go every day to treat the ferrets and examine them for lice. I would change out flypaper that was overfilled with dead houseflies. I would treat the sink with either bleach or boiling water and continue refreshing the acerbic traps I had set for the fruit flies. The numbers dwindled by the day. The ferret's waste pan was no longer infested with larvae. At the end of the week, only a small contingent of the flies remained. You better be careful, OP. Them's the hardest fighters. <laughs> the gravity of what I had done sank in. Despite the flies being an invasive nuisance, they were still connected to the world, part of the wonder of the natural world, and... I did have some regrets. My righteous fury had waned as their numbers slid to near unsustainability. Though I was proud of my work, there were pangs of remorse in my heart. These flies had given me purpose in a time that was dark for the whole world. They were worthy of a second chance. So I set one final tool to work. I set out a combination of mashed bananas and potatoes for the fruit flies and a small container of cheap meat for the houseflies. After a day, I trapped whatever was in the containers and put some air holes. I took them home with me and allowed them to proliferate a little. So essentially, you've just put uh, a small number of them into indentured servitude. I don't know if that's all that much better. <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you. That is way more connected and thoughtful than I ever would have been. I would have said, what's that? Only 10 left? Great, you're all dead. <laughs> well, I let my small pet colonies of flies cultivate. I wiped out the remaining invaders in Sarah's apartment over the second week. By the time she came back, the ferrets had been cured of their infestation and bathed. Their fur was coming back and almost all their scabs had healed up. They were almost back to their cheerful, playful selves. She thanked me and paid me what she initially promised plus a healthy bonus for my amateur veterinary and exterminator skills, I told her to give me a call if the fly problem kicked up again, or if the fur noodles started getting scabby or moody again. Then with that chapter closed, I walked out of her apartment complex, got into my car, and with a certain level of drama, sighed deeply and said, This house is clean. <laughs> Uh, oh, that is next level dedication. I mean, I already knew OP was a cool guy. We hang out in Discord VC all the time, but the levels that he will go to for another human being is something to be admired. Upon returning home, I retrieved the two large Tupperware containers, now housing sizable colonies of fruit flies and house flies, and I drove them out to a forest preserve about 10 miles out of town. I found a nice creek and prepared to open them, 
but not before paraphrasing the same game cinematic that I had paraphrased before. I held the containers up and spoke dramatically to the colonies. It is the nature of life to seek culpability in a time of tragedy. It's a sign of strength to cry out against fate rather than to bow one's head and succumb. Inevitably, you may blame the sword that fell your brethren, the bug assault, but I merely perform a duty to my friend, Sarah, to further fear me, redundant, to hate me, feudal. Those of you more sensible will place responsibility with those that force my hand. With some fortune, you may foster this hatred into purpose and further rule your own fate by serving your role in nature. But ultimately, it was I who set this event into motion with a single blow from my hammer. Fly, swatter. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, beautifully put. That's wonderful. Let justice be done. <laughs> And with this, I opened the containers and poured them out. The flies spread across the area as I again smoked a cigarette and watched them venture off into the world, hoping that they would find a place to call their own out here, that they would continue their work as decomposers in the ecosystem and never again darken the doorstep of another person. As the swarms dissipated, I took some pride in my decision to give the survivors a second chance. I stood and walked away. I thought about the last two weeks with mixed emotions as I ventured out of the forest preserve. Then, like all things in my life, I allowed myself to let go of those emotions, cleansing myself for whatever came next. I hope that you enjoyed this little dive into the insanity that I call my own mind. I know it's a relatively bland story that you might call petty revenge or maybe nuclear revenge, depending on your affinity for flies. <laughs> Either way, thank you for joining me on this journey. I have a few more Ethan escapades for y'all. They usually focus on me getting really obsessive about a singular thing for a period of time until I either quit in frustration or succeed through brute force and repetition. They also usually have some fantasy or sci-fi theming because that's how I relate to the world sometimes. Clearly the theme here was Warhammer 40k, but... I go off on a lot of weird internal journeys, so I do hope that you'll join me for the next one. Damn, dude, that is a primo story about, you know, just, just helping out a friend, nothing in particular. Could have been summed up in a paragraph, but the journey that we went on together... I love it. I love it so much. I'm liking this series. It's different than the things that we usually do, but I'm not sure that that's a bad thing. <laughs> so keep them coming. You got me hooked in for whatever's next. And thank you so much for writing and, and sharing your journey with us. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. I appreciate that so very much. You could also maybe share the video around if you should like. We got all kinds of links in the description, plugs, playlists, podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, etc. Uh, we also got social medias, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. I'm everywhere on the internet. I'd also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous channel members and Patreon patrons as I do every episode, Jerry, Jerry, much. So thank you too. A tiny boy, the Melgia Hannon, Sean Cantwell, John Endorse, Train Boy, that one gay cop, Valley Eye Crane, She's a Angel Dark, Bedazzled Misery, Skylar Rain, The Fez Wearer, Rosie Rainbow, Heaven Set, Robert Timothy, Jackie McQuitty, Crim Stride, AJ Collin, Tooth Plushy, Corey Arts, Kelly Clark, Florence Waver, Dungeon Bat, Billy D, Robert Waits, Brandon Ashraf, Faith, Danica, Wargaming, Steve, Skylar Morningstar, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Death Flagship, and buy two, get one hand. From Patreon, Glorious Maximus, Oh, that's a new one, Holly Hole and Robert Waits, Camille, Sarah, Vixie, Ellipses, Captain Cloud, Jerry, Deku, Esteban, Wargaming, Steve, Beat Top, with Bang Mouse, Downtown, with Jerry, Bank for Forgiveness, He sure did, PCB, Santa Jerry, Silent Revolver, a very tired Jerry, and Justy Jargonian Jerry, Aaron Jerry, and Frank Berry, Ain't that a hot and Comrade Moody, Destiny Piper, Dr. Larks, Jal, Aaron Arrow, Radic Mechanic, Eastmarks, Rose Rover Studios, Spy Drake, Gizmo Jack, Adrian VR, Irish Pirate, Lust of Blue Marmalade, a Mutiny, Iron Hollow, J.M. Coon, Jerry Smith, Jerry Kisune, the original Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Flips, Jerry, make my name longer, so Red X speeds up the Patreon, let's see more. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Jerry, the outlaw of the Trunga, Hong Kong, Jerry, 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 I'm begging you, please don't take my pen. Jukebox, Jerry, K. Jalis 9, Kira, Crew, He, Cuddly Dragon, Lady Italian Grey, Aldino, Lady in Awakening, Lauren Crow, Legit Maker, Lord Jerry, Leader of the Thunder Jerry's, Luke X was a race car driver, he wasn't a friend of mine, never did win that chicken flag, but I hope you drink his wine, like and subscribe. <laughs> Lady Dix, Melgar, the Destroyer, Metal Factor, I'm here because my cringe senses are tingling. Yeah, it worked out today, huh? Miss Black, Needles King 89, not another Jerry, but he is though. Jerry 
the Jerry Best, Queens, Quaaludes, and Quite Minds, Ram Tag, Lacrimates, Red Wind, Rose, Jerry Miller, Surrey to the Lolita, Scarlet's Coven, Sergeant K-Cop, Bring up the Silo Whip, 70 Gunner, Sign Empty Boomstick, Brilliant Tomorrow, The Gypsy Barber, The Lilith, Who, Oh, Trufusky, This isn't even my final beard, Take Jerry, Time Fun, The Bobby, Get Back in the Real World, Vanguard, Angel, BC3, Viking Jerry, Vladimir, Dragonov, Wicked Tag, Zephyr, Gargoyle, or Clay, One Leg Jerry has returned for battle, A Normal Jerry, A Right Red, The Yorker, Doritos, But A Galloping Rex, With These Advanced Track Beards, Admiral T-Tank, Amber Alder, Another Stupid Hipster, Atomic Jerry, Zelda, Breaker of the Tom Army, Bad Penny Lake, Bartender Caleb, Big Dad, <laughs> I always do. Get to it. The Doodles commission's also open. Jerry Boo's daughter. Ghost of Alpha Graymon 365. Half-slapped Jerry in a tracksuit. <laughs> Ink not. Hydra Jerry Solomon. Jace Christensen. Janitor Jerry's back from the abyss to clean up after the teenage beards. Good luck. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Gerald of Arabia. Jerry in the Christmas machine. AKA Roxanne Wolfson Jerry. Jerry Bobo 2 S's and Eat as Jesse. Jerry Springer the results are in. You are not the neckbeard. Jerry the Sussy Baca. Jerry's mom has got it going on. Check out the mustache on Jerry Aldo Rivera. Jerry Ruxers. Jerry Rope Wagon. Kim Bobbles. Kids again. Machia CD. Maybe next time. Miss Duchess. Mr. Gasmas. Not a viper. Not a visible angel. Raptor. Axel. Dark Snary. That's Nom. Jerry. Spoonie the Rogue. Spoopy Scary. Jerry Ton. Techno Dove. They call me Jerry Two Knives. Jerry Pie. Third stuff. This is purely a mercantile transaction. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that, that's pretty true. <laughs> to infinite Jerry and beyond. Uh, Tokyo Bird, Unkale, Vaughn, Venom Jerry, two liter Mountain Dew, Grow by Deckmere, Grow. It's Jerry Time, holds Red X Morpher. Hi, G, it's Jerry Time, holds Red X Morpher. Humility, and thank you to my $1 patrons as well. Bless up to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike, helping me to make it through the month. No joke, you guys really doing the most out here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you can support alongside these people, that's huge. If you can't afford it, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like uh, watching some more Red X videos. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, even if you are a fly. And I shall see you in the next one, so until then, friends, bye bye